It's Donovan Everett from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year. It's time for race four now, and race four is a race going to be run over the 1600 meter trip. Follow in the box seat podcast MR67 handicap. Race four kicks off jackpot one, leg one, jackpot one, and the time you need to jot down is 14.20 to get your bets on for race number four. It certainly does look to be a competitive field where I think you can make a case for quite a few runners in this lineup. And I thought a um, horse at a nice price and a nice each way price could possibly be the 11 Stanley. He does have a wide draw to contend with, but he has tumbled down in the ratings. He's on a mark of 64. He's come down 22 merit rating points. His best form is over the 1600 meter trip. Six tries, one win, one second, one fought, one and a half kgs off the back. And I think he's on, on a competitive mark. He would have definitely needed his last start. He'll strip a much fitter horse in this lineup. And I think if they just uh, give him a chance from the draw, I think that he can run a cracker in this lineup at an each way price because there does seem to be a lot of tempo in the race, which could suit a number 11 Stanley if they just ride him a bit cold and let him run on. He could improve on his recent form. Do you give Stanley any chance in this lineup, please? Rahel, I'm hoping you started off the show by saying it's a competitive race. I'm hoping it's not because I like one horse here and I'm going to be tipping this horse at a price for everything. Pick six, place accumulator, buy pot, I'm all in here, hoping to catch the right wave at the right time, and it's number seven, don't touch me. Duncan Houses run up. Well, for any horse to follow up from the maiden straight into the winner's box, uh, it shows that the ability is there. And this horse had back-to-back -back wins uh, in August, uh, September last year, and that's positive. And if you look at uh, his form since, he's seldom far off the action in our Beside maybe his last start where he was beaten four lengths, he's there or thereabouts and he always seems to give off his best. He's come down in the ratings as well, 74 to a 68. And uh, if you look at his last start, no winners, direct winners that is, but a subsequent winner most recently was Paul Lafferty's runner, Captain Seeger. His penultimate start, Maximus and Kuma have come out to win. And then, uh, Rael, you know, just to add to my case, if you look at his recent form, merit rated 88 C Division. Average rating 79. Penultimate start, average rating 70, 62. The average rating that he takes on here is 65. Now, you like a horse, Ryle. I'm actually surprised because you like a horse here, Lucky Dancer, in the, the previous race. And this, my fellow, has run third, close up to Lucky Dancer, uh, three starts back. I'm going on that run purely because I mentioned that it was a merit rated 82. Uh, a C division class. Now, if he reproduces that run, and both of us agree that Lucky Dancer is definitely the horse to beat as a price. I'm saying, why? Why are you not in my camp here, but I like this horse a lot today. My, my only concern is that he, in the closing stages of the race, in his last two starts, he hasn't really given it. Um, you know, he hasn't really tried his best. I think he's been beaten four lengths last time Okay, out. okay. If Lucky Dancer wins, how would your mood be about this horse? It would be a lot more upbeat and I think he'd go really close to winning. Okay. So I'd be waiting uh, to see if Lucky Dancer I'm does I'm hoping that Lucky through. Dancer wins for you and I also like it earlier on today. But if Lucky Dancer wins, guys, this horse is priced up at around 8 to 1. I don't think... What price was Lucky Dancer, right? 7 to 1. 7 to 1, Lucky Dancer. 8 to 1, this horse. You're getting 8 times 9. 8 times 9 is 72. That's a 72 to 1 double. That's a smashing I think, double. I think that's a smashing double. I mean, you can take the cover with the places as well. But I'm, I'm all in with seven. Don't touch me, Ariel. You know, I've, I've, I've said I've been waiting for the source for the right race at the right time. I'm hoping it is the case. It's never uh, going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to not happen <laughs> more often than not when you follow horses that are dropping in the ratings. You may be a run, uh, two runs too early to get in, but uh, they will eventually come to hand. But... It's all about how much of patience you have following a horse that's coming down in the ratings. And I'm hoping that this guy is at the right place at the right time. So I'm going seven. Don't touch me. Your selections? 
I'm going to go each way on number 11, uh, Stanley, but uh, I'll definitely <laughs> include the seven. Don't touch me. Four trifectas and quartets. Which horses do you possibly think could get involved? I know the one high green is completely dropping in the ratings. Five points after that uh, last run. He's on a mark of 60. Third run after rest. Could he possibly feature in those trifectas and quartets? After number seven, don't touch me. I've just written down four horses in uh, nine, 12, eight, and 11. That's going to be horses that I think will feature for trifecta and maybe exacta money. Nine, 12, eight, and 11. I think it would be uh, fitting if uh, don't touch me came through to win. Stanley ran second, get the exacta swingers and the whole lot there. I think it'll be fitting if Lucky Dancer wins and Don't Touch Me wins because we found two nice horses here and hopefully everything goes according to plan. Uh, my name's Danny Diliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, s we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.